Uh, there she is. We actually did get the drow. I mean, we talked about it in the second phase, and we're like, well, I'd be surprised if they didn't ban the drow. And then we kind of forgot. Or at least I did. <laughs> this is, uh, this is going to be a little worse in here, dude. Ten seconds, Drow, Ranger, Venge, OD, Enigma. I mean, you get this helm going. This is definitely seconds, a bit of early pressure. And then you can fall back from the Ancients. Get some gold going for yourselves. And they will now ban that centaur because uh, I think that is the the obvious pick that that looked really good because we talked about um, pugna hating it when your team has catch. That's why you often see centaur versus the pugna. But they can really just get any aura carry here, and their life looks pretty good. Maybe even like an underlord. I know you love underlord. It's love hate. I don't know. Ten Ever since we two. saw that Zhao uh Underlord dominate so hard, I feel like I'm. Five I just don't know where to place the hero. I do really like him, but so many games it feels like he just doesn't really do that much. And again, if he like falls behind in like the early levels, like if he dies at level two or something and gets boxed out of lane, he can't really jungle at level two or three that well. And you just have this giant beefy Underlord that you want to be your tank in the front line, but then he's so far behind he's not really a tank. And if you can blow him up before he can get his ultimate off to be the taxi service, the pick just feels kind of useless to me. But on the flip side, if you have a good lane, he can be real da He can be real annoying. If you hit critical mass and get those guardian greaves, once you hit level 20 with the regen, he becomes almost unkillable, I'd say. That's a bit of a hyperbole, but it's insane how tanky he gets towards the late game. They actually go with the, uh, the classic draft counter of the Alk ban. That is not one that we get to, see, to uh, see all too often, but uh, can be pretty good at just delaying out the game. And so, uh, well, they, they go along the same lines. It'll be the Tide Hunter. Nice bit okay. of team fight. Good hero for the Enigma to follow up upon. Whoa, but there it is. Seeker. There it is. Arc Warden, baby. Niche is on it. All right. So, Zai on the Pigna. And uh, it looks like no, no real mysteries with these 10 heroes here as to where they're all going. No surprises across the board. All right. All well, right. I like Chaos's draft. I don't think um, there's any reason why you should be like, oh, Secret, I've got this game. I mean, obviously, this fits Secret's play style really well. Most people are on a pretty signature hero for them. But, uh, you know, you, you have a very clear strategy from Chaos. Maybe that can be a bit dangerous sometimes because it uh, can seem somewhat obvious as to what the lineup wants to do. But, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an obvious strat for a good reason. It, you can see how you just play this out. Yeah. Should be a good game. I, I like both drafts along the same lines of what you just said. Drow, Venge, some good synergy with that OD also. Some amazing team fight for Chaos with the Enigma and the Tide Hunter. Definitely a bit cooldown reliant, though. That is one thing I'm a little worried about for Chaos. Yes and no. It kind of depends. It can, all, it can also be one of those situations where it's still hard to get in while that Ravage and Black Hole are just kind of up. You know what I mean? Because they have so much tower pressure that it might get into one of the situations where the Tide Hunter is just like hitting the tower with Ravage and Secret don't know how to initiate if their Arc Warden is still farming up and they're basically fighting four into five. Okay. I feel like mid yeah. one has a lot of pressure on on this game. Sauce. Yeah, I think he's used to that, though. The way they pick Ember... Very true. For battle. It's kind of his bread and butter. So a fair yeah. point, but it does not yeah. make me overly concerned. He kind of got away with a little bit of it too, this game. You know, it's a first phase Ember and it, it's not a terrible Ember game. It's actually like kind of good. I mean, the OD yeah. is obviously an issue. So that's that's, um, that, that's a good one for them. But, uh, you know, someone to get into the back line onto a Drow. Sure, you have to go for certain itemization versus the, uh, the silence and whatnot. But overall... Definitely uh, a playable one here, especially because you're not hoping to be versus the OD in lane anyway. Right. Puppy will grab his signature Abaddon on the five. No surprises there. Now mid one will take the Ember up top. See this Arc Warden mid. So Arc Warden OD. That should be a, a cool matchup, huh? How exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arc Warden lanes. Gonna see some spark wraiths. Gonna see some astrals. Is is that lane kind of a wash? Does does OD still win that matchup? 
I don't think so. I think it's just I think it's the wash. I think it's yeah. just not, nothing exciting. Both are just gonna farm. The battle begins. There's no real reason. I mean the OD will do better, I would say, yes. I guess OD will win the lane, but nothing nothing substantial in the life of an Eric Warden. Because mm. he should still get all his levels and he obviously has the jungle that he can abuse and then it's just a, a matter yeah. of getting to level six. I'm also curious, what what is like the general go to build for Arc Warden these days? Are we still on like Necro books? Is it all about the BOTs? The, no, the Maelstrom? it's more about like yeah, it's more like Maelstroms and BOTs and that you know Hurricane Pikes, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, away from the Necro units, huh? I mean, one of the most important things about Arc Warden players though is that um, the ability to kind of play both builds. I would say like you still see it sometimes. Like I think it was. Um, Jeez, I can't remember what tournament it was recently, but we were talking a lot about Eric Warden recently in one of those tournaments, and we had the same player go like the Necro build and then also the Maelstrom build, just depending on like what game it was. So, okay, certainly like still an important aspect of the hero, but I think we're talking like a ninety percent or higher for the not Necro build. Gotcha. Okay, man, how things have changed. Misery going to be on for the, the Enigma better. here. Finds himself some ogres to get started. Top lane is looking real good for Chaos so far. And this, uh... Abaddon is almost out of his first life. My purpose Just has to make sure that he doesn't go down. And bottom, how's our Tidehunter doing? It's the Tavo Tide. He'll be up against the dual lane of Nyx Pugna. Yeah, he's got Misery's Ring to help out. So sitting at 5.1 before the Tango. But uh, a lot of spam coming from a Pugna lane. And has to be careful he doesn't end up getting caught by a stun. And just uh, straight up into a kill. So, yeah. Still has the salve. He keeps backstroking his way through there. And he's got the stick queued up. That'll also help quite a bit in this lane, no doubt. All right. Things pretty quiet to start off this laning phase. Mid still very even. Nisha 8-1. 7-0 on Weeha. Gets the Astral. Oh, no punish on the puppy, though. I mean, he just keeps claritying up. He's keeping it active and constantly healing uh, mid one back up. They just can't get their ass down. No matter how much HFN right clicks them, it doesn't seem to matter. He grabbed the clarity there. It's pretty nice. Puppy might finally go for this deny. Yeah, he's got there just it enough at 75 with that last bit of mana. So close. He almost uh, would have had to go and like run into some creeps or something before hitting it. Ah, oh, come on. This is Puppy. He invented man. the position five of Baden. He's got the math. He knows the efficiency, man. Yeah, that was like down to the wire, dude. But uh, he will also deward his small camp just in time before the three minute mark. So he'll have something to pull with if he needs it. Okay. It's been a fine start for the Drought Ranger. Like you mentioned, this uh, is becoming more common on Radiant's side. It feels pretty safe when you can get the lane control like this. Oh, jeez. All right, he's gone for a play in the mid lane here. Weehaw, he used the Astral to dodge one of the Spark Rays, but then Nisha just ended up putting uh, another one directly under him. So was uh, not worth, because he ended up just getting two down, essentially, because of that. Does force a salve out of the OD, though. Pugna, the big breadwinner at the moment. Zai, top in the last hit chart. Tavo, oh, here we go. Maybe a kill attempt onto Tavo. Decrep to start things off. We'll as need another Q. Smash. It's going to be close. Not quite there. Yapsor. They want to dive this. They want this first blood. Yappy pops the carapace and they get it. Nyx Assassin finds the kill. Yeah, Yapsor just covering his bases. He's just like, listen, the second he fogs me, he might go for the anchor smash to try and live just to reduce my damage. So. Covers it with the uh, the carapace, and now he's actually going to get himself a haste rune, and he does have a mango. So if Nietzsche can wear down Weeha right now, they do have a kill opportunity. Up top, big chase. Oh, oh buddy, look what at a that player. puppy with the deny for the kill. Value? He's too good. Gives the full XP over to mid one, 135. And here's that gank mid. But uh, astral on to the Eric Warden that means this will not result in anything. Well, well, maybe. Uh, it's a hasted up Nyx, just about to expire. Trying to connect with this stun. Weeha with the sidesteps, but Yapsor finds it. Very nicely done. Now Weeha on the run has another Astral. Barkwraith is down. This should be a kill. And it is. Nishi gets credit. 
So nice use of the carapace there onto the astral. It's like, it's one of those things where you're just like, yeah, it's not going to make a difference though. And then you're like, oh yeah, right. But he's still hasted. So that he's able to catch back up after anyway. So uh, yeah, so we're just really in the moment there. However, oh, bottom lane, Zai actually does get that bounty. Damn, Zai, nicely done. And Enough burns top. a raindrop for Mid one went for it. Takes a lot of damage in return. Yapsor with the pump fakes. And makes some space for his buddy to make it out. And it's so patient with that stun. So, bounties, what do we got here? Ends up being one for chaos, three for secret. Am I counting right? I think so. I believe so. Man, Tavo's actually doing so well. And he's going to get this pull off. I don't think Zai's going to kill that range creep in time. And, uh, yeah, Tavo's at 21 last sets. I mean, some of these are probably small camp, I'm guessing, because, yeah, he's super poor. But his XP's all right for five minutes. I mean, basically, he's the same XP as the Pugna. Yeah. You know, both sides getting a lot out of this bottom lane. Enigma still sending a lot of time in the jungle. Misery, relatively uncontested this game. Picked up his ring of health now. Soon to be four. Yeah, the level two heals there from uh, Puppy now just... <laughs> mid one feels untouchable, honestly. No yeah. real kill threat. And now they're just kind of counting the seconds until mid one's level six. And they need to be concerned. Still pretty far away. Actually, only halfway through four. God. <laughs> Look at all these spark wraiths mid. He is quite the hero, man. And they've they've really planted Yavsor here for a long time. Ever since Zai has gotten the edge bottom, they just have no concerns about Tavo, and they're all over this OD. And this is, uh, you know, we talk about matchups. This is why the supports are so important. Just doing things like this to just zone out Weeha. Does have a stack to farm up here, though, so pretty important for him. Yapsor all over the place. And posturing like he wants to make a rotation up top, but this Venge has been scouting him out. Will press forward now. Miss Coil. Follow up stun. Could be a kill. Mid one on his way over. Hits him with a slight. They'll need one or two more. Salve gets broken. Drops the stun on the Abaddon. Yapsor helps set it up. Puppy grabs it with the Miss Coil. Another aphotic shield keeps him alive. <laughs> nice stun from Yapsor. HFN on the run. In trouble. They'll dive it and bring him down. Now mid one gets another. Very nice. And at the same time in the bottom lane, they use the Ravage in combination with Misery rotating in on the Enigma to get the kill on Zai and apply a lot of tower pressure here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Zai did go down. You're right. Yeah, it was all while that fight was happening. He's going to grab himself that Centaur. Not too bad. Decrep, ult, stun from Yappy. Nice chunk of gold from that. And of course, they do defend the tower. Pretty good start for Secret here. Five to one, over a 2K net worth lead. All three of their cores top of the charts right now. Oh, and that uh, Spark Ray is going to scout the Invis rune here, but uh, Kennedy will snag it away from Nisha. But obviously, they're going to know this thing is up here, so hard to make a real play oh. on it. A little scary. Tempest double comes out. Weeha taking oh, King huge RD. damage. He, he soaked up that Spark Ray to save Weeha's life. Is it actually going to be enough, though? The Nyx is on... Or no, it's the Abaddon, rather. Okay. Puppy doing some damage. Does get the deny. What a player. Sanity's Eclipse was used, and he bottom? still gets the deny. Down Tavo. bottom, Tavo trying to TP out. It'll be close. He does not make it. Zai sucks him down and finds the kill. Oh, man. Puppy's so annoying to play against. <laughs> That's an understatement, dude. After such a nice play too from King RD. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. But uh, yeah, now that moment has occurred. The level six for mid one. Of course, uh, the six was earlier for Radiance HFN. He's already hitting the attack. ancients. So the dream is real for the Drow player. And uh, King RD gonna be a little bit careful up there as the the wave pushes into his tower. You can see he's not even farming because he's too scared Radiance of the triple remnant. Tower under attack yeah, phase boots can be on the way next brow level seven Ooh, so misery where the farming play. begins you gotta deny on the tower with the idlons while zai was pushing it small victory there for chaos 
Dyer are scanning. Mid lane, misery. Should be a freebie for Nisha, I think. There it is. This is the uh, the no go zone, dude. Everyone who comes in here is just dying or going down to like 10% HP and barely living. Yeah. Radiance middle tower. And they're gonna rotate that Pugna in here soon. He actually has an arcane rune on Pugna. This item's so good for sieging towers. Or rather, this uh, rune. Yeah. So 3.5 second cooldown on Nether Blast. Jeez. <laughs> That's balanced, right? Yeah, with the siege creep also. This thing's going down pretty quick. Chaos looking like they want to mount a defense. Oh, man. Easier said than though. done, though. They'll go in onto Weeha. Follow up stun after the decrep, and he is down. Tower also falls. Things looking rough for Chaos here in the first 10 minutes. Now up to a 5k net worth lead. Top lane. Black hole from Misery, not enough for the kill, and he'll just remnant away. Hey, he just remnants back to mid. Uh, gets healed up by the Abba and his bottle, and he's almost full HP again. Okay, and still a couple seconds on this Arcane Rune. Glyph will mitigate some of it, but uh, they've got this Siege Creep still alive. Secret want to keep the pressure on while they can. Man, this is devastating. Tide on his way in, does have a Ravage, but he loses his mana. Uh-oh. Tower falls. And Tabo might well go down also. Yeah, then they have the Carapace too. Onto the OD. They get the kill with the Slight. And that gets and them another level for the forward. Mid one goes up to the high ground. He's got the heals from Puppy. It's another kill. Weeha does manage to finish off the Abaddon. But it costs him the Sanity's Eclipse. And it's only the Abaddon. Oh, at least uh, Zai is out of mana. So that will save their tier 3. Bottom tower. And uh, they'll end up losing the bottom tower to just the catapult. But obviously, uh, a lot of wins here over the past little bit for Team Secret. And yeah. uh, they're just, they're pushing so early when they're just not ready to fight right now for Chaos. We talk about how their lineup, like, it's very obvious how they want to play right now. But um, the laning stage did not go very well for a couple of their heroes. And uh, they're not quite ready to fight. Of invisibility. No, certainly not. I mean, this snowball is rolling for Secret. Right now, just desperately trying to get this Drow Ranger online. HFN staying in his safety zone, working the neutrals. He is level 9, farming decently well, given the context of this game, but he's kind of the only one on his team. His other two cores in Strug City. Midas on the way for Weeha. Very close to it now, but he is definitely not in fighting shape. He's had a hard Tide has the Vlads, at least. That's something. I feel like... Uh... Even Weeha only has two deaths, but it, it's felt worse than that for him, where he just hasn't really had a mid lane. He got bullied out so early by the Arc Warden mm -hmm. uh, in combination with the Nyx Assassin. And ever since then, like, he just kept running the Spark Rapes, couldn't really uh, control the fights himself. Sticking around for that tier one in the mid lane when it looked completely hopeless really hurt him. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a big tumble. Now Nisha working on his rotation through the jungle, working that Midas, has the Maelstrom just about complete now with that last wolf. And they will have some spikes coming up soon though, right? I mean, as you said, they have the Vlads on Tavo, they have the Ravage available, they can still create a lot of pressure with the Enigma and the Tidehunter, and uh, they're actually worried about potential scans here. Or sorry, potential smokes. As you can see, they're scanning in the mid lane, thinking there might be a rotation like that through uh, from Team Seeker pushing in because they haven't seen them in a while. And likewise, Seeker concerned as to where exactly Chaos are playing on the map at the moment because both teams a little blind as to the opposite side of the map. Not exactly sure where their opponents are amassing their forces. Initiation onto Puppy, but uh, has found his level six. So not an easy target to deal with. And what do we got for mid one? Looks like he's just going to go Maelstrom also. Nothing too crazy about this build. Just phase Maelstrom. Feels pretty good though. Secret going to have uh, a lot of tools to push out Dude, these creep waves. tavo has been waiting for so long up here. <laughs> They're not going to find him. Now back the other way. There's a black hole available. Zai could be in some trouble, but the Arc Warden's here. Looks like Secret will start to turn this around. TP out from Misery. 
Does not make it. Wow. That was close. Can't believe Zai got that. He also has a veil of Discord, by the way. So this Pugna is really scary. Yeah, he does a dumb amount of damage. That is for sure. They actually couldn't fight with the uh, the Nether War being down there at that moment. Just like, you look at those abilities and it adds up pretty fast when you don't have that much HP at this point. And now they're just planning it down again with the Veil. Like, Nisha is just... We talk about Terrorblade being able to do this a lot. And uh, Eric Warden can do the same thing, where if you just get a little bit of a lead, and if, if it doesn't feel like they can contest you, and you're just free to send them in like this, I mean, it is a ton of damage. He's basically meta every time here. And they just yeah. are not ready for this on the side of Chaos again. Like, no real option here. Found his level 10, gets that little bit of cooldown reduction. HFN is in like Ag's territory right now. At least that's what he's thinking. And oh, that is not swap. a good sign for your game. Set up onto the Arc Warden. Black Hole, some decent follow up. They do bring him down. They have a little bit of explosive damage from Chaos, but that's all they'll get for now. And Secret might continue to fight. They are going to look to bring down King RD, and they find that kill. So it's a one for one. But great setup from Chaos to finish off the Arc Warden like that. Oh, you, you can't help but feel like they needed more, though. Yeah, I cost them all their cooldowns. Yeah, spending everything like that just for the Arc Warden. Obviously, it's still good, but there's a reason right. Secret are uh, still playing fairly aggressive right now. Like, ch still chipping away this tower, even when it's just Zai. He knows that they don't really have the catch to yeah. deal with him, but probably a little concerned about potential vision in the area, so he will start to retreat now. Yeah, you're right. HFN, one piece away for the Ags, just a couple hundred gold. A step in the right direction, but still some farming to go. And Secret, they are coming. Nice silence under the Knicks will buy him a little bit of time and actually keep him alive. Uh, playing with fire there. <laughs> and Puffy, wondering if he's just going to go straight for the Ancients after. And uh, we'll scout it out, but uh, they will take the big Ancient, the Roshan. The Amalgamation of Ancients. <laughs> The Amalgamation? Can yep, we call Roche that? I mean, you look at this guy. He is uh, the Amalgamation. He's something special, that's for sure. I like that he's got dragon. these little baby, like, T-Rex wings. Like, obviously, those wings would never uh, allow a beast of that size to fly. True. But he's still got them, you know? Uh-oh, King RD. He's going to walk into the danger zone. They will still finish off Roche. He's going to try to TP out. And that'll be successful. Meanwhile, up top, though, Weeha. Playing a little ring around the Rosie as Zai comes up and says, all right, enough of that. Yeah, he uh, tried to TP out, but Yapsor was stalking him with the Vendetta. So when Weeha went for the TP to uh, to get out of that top lane, he just got vendetta stunned. And then he had to Astral Yapsor, but whenever you Astral Nyx, you know that he's going to carapace you when he comes out. Mm -hmm. So you're just uh, in big trouble every single time. So I do want to clarify, T-Rex wings. I know T-Rexes don't have wings. They've got the little baby arms, the wings of Roche. No, I, I know what you were saying. Arms. I got you. It's okay. You got it. Several yeah. people in chat did not. So just wanted to clarify there. Are you sure you don't think T-Rexes fly? I just, well, you know, I'm not a dinosaur connoisseur as we've You've made over, that so. very clear on previous broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the T-Rex did not fly. Confirmed. By science. Thank you. Well, you don't know that. Well, I'm, show me the footage. <laughs> show me the bones. Top tower is under I mean, just think, dude. They could have found a pterodactyl and a T-Rex on top of each other in a mass grave, and they could have gotten confused. Maybe that's what it was. You know, maybe those were his wings all along. You know? Uh, secret, they got wings. Radiant They're flying their way to victory. 3-13 to 13 at the 19-minute mark. They look like they want to go high ground here. Ages of the Immortals still in tow for Nisha. Oh, another swap. Get him up to the high ground. Nisha pretty low, but a defensive decrep will keep him alive, and instead they turn onto the Venge. Secret go one for nil. No buyback on the Venge. Mid one. In pretty deep, but makes it back. And all offensive items here. So very much uh, needs the support of Puppy with the Aphotic Shields, the Heals, and the Urns, because we got a Maelstrom and a Mjolnir. Siege from the low ground. Black Hole and Ravage available, but Tavo having trouble with mana. Ten stick charges. Between the mana burn from the Nyx and that Nether Ward, this is a pretty tough life for the Tide. He's totally dry.
All right, and then it looks like they're just gonna take that and get out. So now two tier threes Radiance that they've started working on. Attack. And we still have another two and a half minutes left on that Aegis. Azai goes down bottom, but he gets stunned up here, first by the troll and then by King RD, so he'll get at least one bounty rune for the Radiant team. But uh, the other three will go the way of Team Secret and just uh, continue to build their lead. Check out uh, the item progression for the Radiant. Not too much. OD finished up that Midas a while ago. He's got the Kaya. Uh, now looking towards a BKB, the Drow Ranger. Looking for a BKB herself after picking up the Agonims. Very slowly coming online here, but... But how do you kill mid one? You pretty much have to ca catch him in this Ravager black hole, which is uh, difficult to do. Yeah. What an interesting build from mid one also. He's got the Desolator queued up next. So doing a little bit of physical and magic mixed together. Yeah, we saw one of these at the uh, Miner too, I believe. Which is, uh, yeah, just one of these builds that's starting to pop up a little bit more. Um, partially because of the, maybe just these like big sleight of fists and everyone's just thinking about the skill a little bit more, right? With it being mm. maxed out in a lot of Ember builds now too. As again, yeah. Weehaw being stalked up by Yapsor. Nice stun. Follow up mana burn. Sets it up for the slight. Mid one. Remnants forward. Not much damage there, but hey, there's a Yule Scepter. That's going to be on Yapsor. I think Weeha will survive this one, but they force huge rotations. This is all five of Chaos now. And Yapsor is just going to TP out. No, he's not. I think that's going to be a dead Nyx, but he is going to make him work for it. Look at this guy. That little bug. Yeah, he almost got away with it, and uh, they will chip down the bottom tier two, it looks like. Finish it and off. Yep. Now it's uh, on to the mind of the next Roche, because there is uh, only another 30 seconds left on this eight. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Okay. Yeah, they're actually just taking free unhealable damage on that mid tier. Great work, range creep. Got a couple licks in. All right. Unhealable damage. The BKBs will be pretty huge for Chaos. If they can stall this out and get a BKB on the Tide, or pardon me, on the Tide, on the uh, OD as well as the Drow Ranger, you could definitely scary. see a moment where they might be able to take a fight. They, and they actually have to do swarm something convincing. Again, on Tanisha. Yeah, that's basically how they got him last time, was just everything. And that's still the only way they can do it, but. Yeah. He's not going to be playing that same game anymore. He's not going to be, like, wrapped up inside his team. They might not ever see the guy again. Just a, a clone of the man as uh, the yep. Boots of Traveler online. Just feels like Secret are just always keeping these creeps on the Radiant side of the map. Or like to draw a heat map of the movements and a dire side would be looking pretty cold right now yeah it's been a while since people have been uh, venturing this far i mean weha's in there now last time he got chased up by the nyx assassin but uh tavo's nearby too pushing the wave in with the help of misery and they should be able to get this tower even with these last couple Dyer's volleys of the eidolons it should be tower. enough and indeed Dyer's it is top tower has fallen. okay a little something glancing at the gold graph the bleeding has stopped, at least for now. Chaos holding steady around an 8, 9k net worth deficit. So, at least it's slowed down, but a ways to go before they start climbing their way back into this game. We talked about it in the series prior, but anytime you've got Tide and Enigma on the same team, you always have that potential for one big fight, and if you can do it around the Roche Pit, can shift the momentum, but... Still a little while till Roche is up. Minute 30 until we see the RNG timer. But BKB for HFN is secured. Yeah, and that's largely why the uh, the gold graph, when they're not fighting too much, doesn't keep climbing too far in Secret's favor. Is uh, at least not the level you expect. Is just this Agnum Scepter. It is crazy how fast HFN farms. He's basically controlling both uh, mid and bottom by himself, and he gets virtually every single last hit too. He's like a vacuum. Like a back. Well, Tavo, Tide Hunter. He's going to be in some trouble. Decrep, setting it up pretty well. Gets him down low. And the Ember Spirit will chop that watermelon down. Doth the lesson. 
High ground we go. Chaos in a little bit of an awkward spot. Their OD is trying to push up top. They glitch straight away, but Secret already at the high ground. They've already killed the Venge. There is a buyback available on her, but not on the Tide. Lift's already been used, so the tier three will fall. OD still not here. He's up top pushing those creeps in. I'm surprised the Aftar hasn't TP back, honestly. Three lane of barracks for Secret. Chaos finally reacting to this now as they TP home. Another tier three dead. That's the BKB available on the OD. They've smoked up. There's BKB on the Enigma as well. This is their big opportunity Whoa. with the Tidehunter being back, and uh, they won't find it right now. So now they're pushed to uh, focus on the Roche fight. A uh, minute and a half till the big boy's up. Now oh, the real Eric Warden's actually still in nearby territory. He's now moving up uh, into that dire jungle, but uh, they had just lost some vision there, I think. And Avenge did also buy back. So in this next uh, potential Roche fight, King RD dies. He will not get back into this one. Dyer's Dyer's gets him out. We have to save that mid tier one. Big action. Oh, yeah, actually point. got the swap silence. Into the silence, but another defensive decrep. Now the banish. Weeha brings him down with the ultimate. It's a great setup and a good pick. No buyback available on mid one. He'll be respawning right around the time Roche spawns. Three second differential. But great stuff from Chaos. Yeah, the mind meld there from HFN and King RD. You, you love seeing those swap plays like that and a little tough to execute with the Drow. Oh, but HFN. Oh. BKB and defensive swap. That's her 10 second charge. Then she's still going to go down as she gets caught by a Pugna Q. Yeah, she's just TPing bot. As the Arc Warden clone will push it out. HMN is scouted on this Observer Ward. They they can try and get to him. I don't think they're going to be fast enough, though. Shadow Blade, Nisha going to start things off with the Tempest double. They know the BKB is on cooldown. This is definitely a kill opportunity if they can get here in time. Puppy gets silenced, and the clone will go down. Oh, it's so close. Puppy's going for it. He, he wants, wants it all. Borrowed time. They ravage to keep her alive. HFN, no. Buyback now used by the Drow. What a disaster for Chaos. They burn the Ravage and she still dies and has to buy back. I think he was saying, I need you to tank the spark right there. That's what it kind of looked like. Uh, he got got by that. So really nice stuff there from Nisha. Now more initiation on the high ground. Tavo chunked down to about half HP. Jeez, that static charge is putting so much damage when he places on the clone like that. One tier three remains and Secret will leave it standing for now. I think Happy just to force that buyback from the Drow even. And Roche now the option and a double damage. Come on. Well, they were taken anyway. You're right, but still. Makes it even easier. No Ravage. They have the Black Hole. How many BKBs do they have? Oh, it's just too late anyway. <laughs> Good game. So they just... <laughs> But uh, they have not yet called it. They're still waiting for their big moment here. Oh, maybe. Okay. Swap from King RD. Tries to keep the Tide alive. BKB from HFN. They do kill Tavo first, and they get the counter kill onto Yapsor. Zion kind of an awkward position, but Puppy in the front lines absorbing so much damage. There's the Black Hole for Misery. Does catch Nisha. That'll be the end of the Aegis. This chaotic fight definitely favoring Chaos, their namesake in this scenario, but can they handle the second life of Nisha? Misery gonna go down as Zai falls simultaneously. Weeha on the run. Gets off one Astral, drops the ultimate, does some decent damage, but it's not enough. And with that, the Radiant running low on options. Few buybacks being used. OD still has his. All things considered, it was a pretty good fight. Just not enough. No, and uh, Secret looking to finally put this one to bed here. HFN lurking nearby with the Shadow Amulet, but what can he really do? Misery doesn't have anything left. Uh, Ravage still not here for another 20 seconds. And Misery's just gone, dead in the tier fours. Mega is imminent now. Top lane of Barracks will be under siege. Secret still playing this very safe, very controlled. 
buyback now from the OD. And they immediately head to the low ground. Havo does have a Ravage back up. Radiance top shrine is under attack. Well, Secret will acknowledge that, uh, all right, they want to play it safe, so we're not going to push too hard. And they'll just go back for the bounty runes of the 30-minute mark here and, uh, again, collect all four. They so please. Eon Disc coming out for Yapsor. I have a cool item in this game. Yeah, probably just hoping to, uh, watch out for some of those, uh, OD wipes. Tough stuff for Chaos here in game number one. Seeger just did uh, a really good job of just pushing nonstop uh, on the lanes. Like, no one really fell back to hit neutrals or anything. Nietzsche was involved really early, helping to push the advantage that they had. Just take down all the towers super fast. And uh, just kind of perfect lane setups as well from Team Secret. Yeah. Here we go. Next high ground siege. Radiant will have a glyph. And they use it straight away. Looks like it'll just delay the inevitable here. Tavo so low. Trying to sit back and be patient with this Ravage, but he needs to be a little bit careful. Relegated the well, it looks like, as HFN BKB on. He's taking a lot of damage, too. Another defensive Astral used to try to save the Venge. Secret still very healthy. Chaos with a lot of low HP heroes will lose their Vengeful Spirit. As Zai just focuses down the structures, spamming out that Nether Blast. Mega is now secured. Only Tier 4s remain. All right, back HFN. to the well, guys. Doing what you can. Puppy lives, puppy dies. Puppy buy back from Puppy. Misery, BKB on, thinking about a black hole, but nope, holds it. Yapsor breaks the Tidehunter. Finally, the Ravage comes out, does connect on most of Secret. Black Holy hole interrupted Astral. right away. <laughs> and GG's called. That's it. Okay. Game number one goes the way of Secret. 27 to 10. Pretty convincing win here in game number one. Really uh, clean movement across the map there from Side Team Secret. Just like the first 15 minutes. This would be a really good game to go back and watch that like first 15 minutes and see how Team Secret.